Welcome back, everyone, to Orlando Out of Context. This is episode 41, and I'm Brian. And I'm Stephanie. So welcome. It's been a two-week hiatus, but we're happy to be back. Yeah, we got a, We have a full list today. We have a full we've list. We've been eating. We've been taking road trips. We've been going to community meetings, <laughs> and we have been out and about. So first of all, follow us on Instagram at Orlando Out of Context, and make sure to visit us at OrlandoOutOfContext.com. Listen and subscribe on Apple Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, and now we're on iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio! I don't know if that really... Do people use iHeartRadio? I do, but I, I use it to listen to the Pittsburgh radio station. I think people listen to it more so they can listen to radio stations other places. Well, I, th- I downloaded the app when I found out that we had been... Um, Approved. accepted or approved into iHeartRadio and they said that they are like now the number one podcast app. I don't believe that. I was like, hmm, I don't think that. Really? Like Apple Podcasts and Spotify don't have that place? And Spotify just changed their interface so it makes listening to podcasts easier. a lot easier. Yeah, it's a whole tab. Yeah. They have a whole tab dedicated to it. So, okay, iHeartRadio, but thanks for accepting us. So today we're going to talk about Orlando Weekly's Best of Orlando Readers Poll 2019. We're going to talk about Southern Living uh, Idea House, which is right here this year. It's right here in Florida. And we're going to talk about La Boucherie. We're going to talk about Stonington's, uh, which is an amazing shrimp place. La Boucherie is a French steakhouse from France. So you're going to want to stay tuned to hear all about that. We're going to talk about uh, Garden Theater, what's coming up there, and the last show of the 2018-2019 season, Flashdance. And you want to stay tuned for a special promo code uh, to pick up your tickets. And then, uh, finally, we're going to talk about I4 Beyond, the ultimate... The ultimate project. It's really intense. Oh yeah, ultimate. they make it sound so. In- Even the graphics on the website are just <laughs> like, like it's a Jesus. blockbuster movie yes. or something. It is. I four is like it's like um, what's that movie with Ludacris and all the cars? Uh, Fast and Furious. Uh, it's like the Fast and Furious I four minus the fast part. Yeah, it's more. It's of just a, furious. It's more just a a, a tragedy. <laughs> anyway, but hopefully they're gonna be be improving because we were invited to an event and we went and uh, saw some stuff <laughs> some stuff we saw a lot of stuff <laughs> so stay tuned for that so first the big exciting announcement is is that we were nominated as best podcast uh for orlando weekly's best of orlando readers poll 2019 which Woo-hoo! is a mouthful it's a mouthful so we made it on that list along with a bunch of other local podcasts so yeah so we're one of 10 podcasts we need you to go vote for us. Yes. So if go to Orlando. Love our podcast and you love us and you want to help us in this endeavor to be the best podcast in all of Orlando. Yeah, it's really helpful just to even be nominated because yeah. it, it gives us uh, more visibility Hopefully to Hopefully people will yeah, listen people and discover us. Yeah. And so we're really excited just to be nominated. And congratulations to the other nine yeah. uh, nominees. And uh, yeah, so you have... Even it helped us do a little research because we, yeah. uh, prior to uh, like the first round of voting, we went ahead and we did, we actually looked at all the other podcasts just to kind of, I don't know, because I really don't, I listen to a whole bunch of podcasts, but even the ones that were, the other ones were nominated, they're all, kind. some of them are kind of... Um, What's a niche podcast? So yeah. they really don't have anything to do with Orlando. So I may not have found them otherwise. Sure. Um. So yeah. So go ahead to orlandoweekly.com. You have until August 6th to vote. And we are under the category is best local co- podcast, but it's under local, local f- color. I think flavor. It it's either local color or local, local flavor. flavor. Anyway, go, uh, go ahead and vote. We have uh, the link on our Instagram page. So yes. We'll take you directly to all the checked boxes. 
Absolutely. So, Stephanie, the next subject is the Southern Living Idea House for 2019. So, tell us about that. Yes. So, you remember Chloe that we had a few weeks back mm-hmm. on our... Um, her and I took a little road trip n- up north. Um, so, every year, the magazine Southern Living, they build, like, this big, beautiful home. And, you know, they it's like a model home to kind of, like, draw attention to you know, companies and, you know, they give you this big brochure and it has like every detail of the home, like all the paint colors, all the finishings, every little detail. And this house was immaculate. And this year, um, 2019, they decided to build the house here. Well, not here, but uh, it's in a development called Crane Island, which is on Amelia Island. And um, so Crane Island is like a new development. So when you go in there, it's a gated community mm-hmm. and you can see they're just starting to build. Like they have like, I don't know, maybe like four other houses that are kind of up and going, but the, um, idea house is fully done mm-hmm. and they do, let's see, every Wednesday through Sunday, they do tours for $22 each and you can go through the house, look at the furnishings, touch everything and it is so beautiful. Like, I could only dream to live in a home like this. So, um... I showed Brian some of the pictures. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's 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 really gorgeous. So, uh, how long did it take for you guys to get here? It's just north north of Jacksonville, right? Yes. So, how long did it take it's you guys to get there? Gosh, I felt like it was so fast, but I think it was because Chloe and I were just... We were talking and talking right. and talking about all kinds of stuff. So, I want to say it was like three hours, three and a half hours... And the route we took was, like, zero traffic, so... And there was a special part of getting there, right? Well, on the way back, we took a little ferry, and then we followed down the coast a little bit, and then we got back on 95. Okay. But we did, like, a little little sightseeing on the way home. So was the ferry both ways, or just on the no, way No, it was just on the way home that we did uh, the ferry. Gotcha. Could you, could you have gone the ferry both ways? I don't know. I I wasn't really paying attention because I wasn't driving. Gotcha. I don't. I feel like we took we took four seventeen like pretty far, and then I think we took ninety five north, and we got to where we were gonna go, and then we took the ferry like over, further over than we. It was like all basically going out of the way, but it was just like to see the coast a little bit. Right. So it's a good day trip. Yeah, definitely, and um. So but. You know, we were um, actually lucky enough to get the whole house to Mm ourselves. So Chloe went uh, with her husband a couple weeks ago, and she said there was like a ton of people there. So um, she spoke with John, who is the VP of sales uh, and marketing there at Crane Island, and he invited her to come back to have a private tour. So that's what you were on, the private experience. So John was so nice. We met him at the site. He basically opened the house for us and said all right enjoy <laughs> <laughs> i'm going back to my office have fun so you know well, i wanted really to nice. like take a nap in the bed and make a meal in the kitchen and <laughs> do all that stuff but the house is 4540 square feet with five bedrooms and five and a half bathrooms and it's got 2257 square feet of porches wow so there's like a porch upstairs there's the porch on the bottom off the family room and has like, you know, when you have like these, I don't think a lot of houses here have it, but it's more houses in California, like where you could open like a wall of mm-hmm. windows mm-hmm. and it will create an open air space Indoor, between the living room. Living. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And, oh, it was just so gorgeous. They had a swing. I saw you on the swing. <sighs> yeah. There was a little tree swing. And it was, it's right on the water, right? Yeah. It's, it's on the, like the intercoastal waterway. So it's, oh my God, it was so beautiful. And there was like the, the whole community was like full of, um, those like Spanish moss trees mm-hmm. and it was just, it was really pretty and it was like so serene. Nice. And, um, you know, the, the Crane Island development uh, itself is set back there's like a private airport close to it mm, okay and um there's gates that you have to go through i was getting like um golden oak vibes you know it gotcha. was like it's exclusive it seems exclusive like it's very exclusive and high end nice 
and it was really really pretty so and how long ago how long again do they go this year with the tours uh june 8th through december 8th that's you can a long do the time. tour and it's only Wednesday, wednesday through sunday and if you do want to do it you can go online and buy your tickets through eventbrite cool but it's definitely it was a great day trip i mean we left at nine and then we were back here in orlando by six and that was even after taking the long way home and stopping for lunch right cool but it was so beautiful. It's nice to have uh, a day trip. Yeah. You know, just to get away just for a little bit, not spend too much money. So that's awesome. So Stephanie and I, a few weeks ago, maybe, maybe it's two weeks ago now, uh, we headed over to La Boucherie. La Boucherie. Is that how you say no. La Boucherie. La Boucherie. <laughs> La Boucherie. Yeah. You're giving him like an Italian accent <laughs> on a French word. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, La Boucherie is over. Um, I would say it's Dr. Phillips. It's right off a of restaurant row. Um, it's at Turkey Lake or Turkey just Lake off Turkey Sand Lake, Lake yeah, off I four. Um, I had h- seen them pop up on our Instagram feed and started following them a little while ago, and was kind of curious, mainly because this is a um, chain out of France, <coughs> and this location is the first. U.S. location. First one. For a uh, La Boucherie. And so I was just curious. It is a kind of like a, I would say like a steakhouse. I didn't get a steakhouse vibe, but they do have a very um, extensive menu mm-hmm. of cuts of meat. Yes. Yeah. You don't get necessarily like an American steakhouse vibe, but they do go with heavy with the theming of with cows. Yes. There were cow tchotchkes. <laughs> We're not a fan of Chosky's. However, that really didn't matter because <laughs> the food was extremely good. So you took part in the Bite 30 menu. Yes. And Stephanie, you took part in, um, you did a, <laughs> a chicken, right? I did the baked chicken. But the the, th- the nice thing about your baked chicken was it was so crispy. It that was crispy. It was good. It yeah. was really good. It was good. And there was a good portion. Yeah. I, that night I wasn't very hungry. I, I don't know. My appetite has been very low lately. And um, so I wanted to order something and it was good. It was just two little pieces and then like a little side of fries. And they gave me some like kind of butter garlic sauce. They have, they have like, four I didn't care. I didn't really like it. It was too buttery. They have four different um, sauces. You, you had a different one, from. right? Yeah, I chose a different one. They have four different sauces that you can choose from. Anyway, so for my bite 30, I uh, had the escargot, which was good good escargot i had the eight ounce boneless ribeye steak which was very good f- flavorful um cooked to my liking which is medium rare and then i had the cream brulee which was very good as well um and then i did but you started out with that drink which yes. was not it, this was on the bite 30 menu it's not on their regular menu it's not no i okay. was looking on the website to find the name of it and it wasn't until i went to the bite 30 menu that gotcha. i found it so it's extra, but this is only for the Bite 30 time. Right. It was called the Mango Mystique. And it was delicious. It was very coffee heavy. It was coffee. So there's Tito's in it. There's a mango mango liqueur, coffee syrup, muddled cilantro, fresh lime, mango, and guava juice. So very good. It was, um, you know, if you don't like coffee, don't don't grab this one. Like, if I would have closed my eyes and smelled it, I would have just been like, oh, that's coffee. When I ordered it, I didn't see at first see the coffee syrup there, which I would have still ordered it because I like coffee. Um, but when I tasted it, I was like, oh, there's coffee in here. And then Stephanie was like, yeah, there's coffee in here. And so she called over the bartender and he did confirm there was coffee. I said, did you make this drink? And he was like, he was almost <laughs> afraid that I was going to say something mean. Bad. <laughs> but it was very good. Because uh, at that point, they had already taken the menus away, so we couldn't go back to look at the ingredients. It was good. You know, the, the service here was really good. Yeah, uh, we met Claude, the owner. He came up to the table actually a few times, maybe twice. And he was working. He was working. He was taking food out. He was talking to patrons, and he was working it. He also told us he owns another uh, restaurant in Dr. Phillips, and I can't remember the name of it. Um, another French it's like a French bistro yeah I think it's down it, the road I think it has the word Paris in it so uh, that one's open in the morning just in the in the morning and I think for the lunch crowd um, but this Le Boucherie was good 
And I would definitely go back. Um, I don't know if they have a happy hour. I, I didn't, didn't see that. any paraphernalia about that. Definitely go check out La Boucherie if you're in the area. It is in the same complex where they have the, what is it, CF Fitness Yeah, gym. and the Ross. And the Ross It is in the location that there was a um, um, graffiti, graffiti junction. junction. And then Stephanie likes an Italian restaurant that's in the same complex. Uh, it's called Fresco Catino Italiano. Fresco Cucina Italiano. But I just call it Frescos. It's Frescos. I just call it Frescos. I've actually Because on the sign it just says Frescos and all those other little words are like little. Cucina, which is kitchen. Cucina. What is it? Cucina. Cucina, not O. Cucina. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Cucina is kitchen. Kitchen. <laughs> yes. In, in Italian? Yeah. I can't keep it's track Italian of... Italian restaurant. I can't keep track of Spanish, English... <laughs> Portuguese, Portuguese, Italian. I, I, you, you all want me to learn it's, so many freaking languages. But it's all, it's Latin. Languages. It's a Latin language. Anyway, Frescos. I've heard good things. There's somebody at work who's, who's talked about it too. Really it good. is very so good. I, I, this is on my list, Frescos. Definitely. It's nice to find these little like hole in the wall type places. Because they're hard to find good. in Orlando. Well, especially in this area. Yeah. It's hard to find uh, these little hole in the wall places that are good. They're, they're kind of like more mom and pop than the, you know, And chains. I've been... Uh, Sometimes that I've been to Fresco's, they have like live music. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. So last night we went to the I-4 meeting, which we'll get to in a moment. Yeah. And after the I-4 prayer meeting, <laughs> <laughs> which I like to call it, we we went to Stonington's. Oh, this place is a hidden gem. It is a hidden it gem. It is fried shrimp and... Uh, well, they are, they're known for their fried shrimp, but they also have chicken as well. Do they have chicken? Yeah. You can okay. get chicken and shrimp. You can mix it. You can get like half and half if you want. This is like the Huey Magoo's, Zaxby's, PDQ of shrimp, but... Way it's, better. It's really good shrimp, and it's it's not... It's, it's very more lightly ho- breaded. It's, and it's, it's more hole in the wallish in terms yes. of the restaurant than those other places I described. But this is what they say on their website, which I agree with. We don't hide behind breading. Our shrimp are just that big. Because <laughs> they are. Yeah, they're big shrimp, and it's lightly breaded, and they're not very greasy either. You know, when you eat fried, like... Fried anything. Fried anything, you just feel like it's all greasy and breading. This is a very light breading. So when I first went there, I was like, look at this woman. Look at her face. <laughs> She's enjoying that. <laughs> We're looking at the website. Uh, <laughs> anyway, when I first went there, there's, I think, it's three choices. There's five piece, eight piece, and 14 piece yeah. or something, or 12 piece or something. And I was like, five pieces of shrimp, like, that's nothing. But five but is enough. five is actually enough uh, because... Just the size of the shrimp. They it's have five, eight, and 11, which is strange. 11 is a lot. So see how you can get also the chicken and shrimp. You can get three-piece shrimp and chicken, oh, five-piece shrimp and chicken. They also have catfish and oh. crab cakes sh- and oysters. Oh, I've had the crab. I think Dev likes the crab cakes here. And the sides here are freaking amazing. Yeah, they the have six really cheese baked macaroni and that cheese. That macaroni is really good. And that cornbread. Oh, that cornbread. Oh! It was really good. It's like sweet and it's soft. And they fry it. And it's good. They fry it in a I pan. I bet they fry it in they a little butter. In, they fry it in That's a That's probably pan. why it tastes so just good. Just slightly. But anyway, back to the, the, the shrimp. The shrimp are just plump. They kind of like split them in half. So for each shrimp, it almost feels like you're eating two shrimp because they're just so big. But the five piece is definitely enough, in my opinion. And I t- told Steph um, that I didn't feel horrible after eating last night uh, because there's something that they they i felt they a little full but i think i drank too much pop i uh, because their pop is really good too but i didn't get that feeling that you could get when you eat fried food and you just feel heavy and gross yeah. um but i'm not saying that the calories weren't there but no, yeah it was just the way that i felt afterwards was you know and i do you, know, you don't overeat yeah. I, I don't think you overeat here i think the, the portions, portions are, are good, good too like the french fries it's not like it's enough. It's just right. It's not like overflowing on your plate. We could probably talk for another 10 minutes about <laughs> this, uh, but y'all need to go. They have one on Kirkman Road uh, and they have one uh, over in Altamont Springs. Go over to their website 
It's Stonington, stoningtonseafood.com. And of course, this week on our Instagram, we're going to post about it. So make sure oh, you go yeah, check it out. Oh, yeah. We're going to post those pics. Oh, for sure. <laughs> so the next thing we wanted to talk about was some stuff that's going on over at the Garden Theater this month. Um, so they're having a summer uh, milk money movies, which I don't really know what that means. Milk money movies. I don't know. That's what their website said. Um, sponsored by the city of winter garden. So Tuesdays, every Tuesday in July at 10 AM, uh, for $3 admission, you get the movie, you get a kid's size popcorn and a juice. And they're playing wreck it. Ralph finding Nemo, beauty and the beast Horton. Here's a who and tangled. Maybe cause back in the day, kids would save their milk money to go see a, mo- uh, a movie. Maybe. At the film house, the old film house. The Nickelodeon, I think is what they called it. <laughs> so maybe that's why they're calling it Milk Money Movies. Hopefully we got But that's that, cute but if you live in the area, you have kids home from school. You know, sometimes you need to get out of the house and do something fun. It's cheap, three bucks. I remember when, um, you know, during the summers, we were always trying to find things to do, whether it be like a VBS, Vacation Bible yeah, School. Yeah, I did that every summer. Or like the library would have a reading club, and if you read so many books, you would get stickers yeah. and all that type of stuff. So this is kind of in the line of that, the fun things to do during the summer yeah. um, so that the, the kids aren't just sitting at home bored. So we do have one more show in the 2018-2019 uh, lineup of uh, shows at Garden Theater, and that is Flashdance, the musical. And it starts July 5th. We will be there the evening of July 5th. So if you're there and see us, say and you want hi. pictures and autographs, you know, <laughs> just don't be afraid to come up to us. We're just regular people like <laughs> everyone else. And it runs uh, July 5th through <laughs> July 28th. And you can go purchase your tickets at gardentheater.org and make sure to use the promo code. O O O C 2019 to get 15% off of your ticket price. Yeah. Save that money. Sweet. So th- that way deal. you have more money, go to the next show. That's right. Because so there's a big, we have a big season coming up in the rest of this year. That's and right. The next year. 2019, 2020 season. So Greece. I'm excited. Greece is like a, a year away. Just let so. me be excited. <laughs> <laughs> So the final thing we're going to talk about is the I-4 Beyond. Beyond the ultimate. So just to get started here, for all of the information, I don't, you know, some people don't know. Some people don't care. Maybe some people don't travel on I-4. I travel on I-4 very little. Um, I do every day, but it's a little small portion that doesn't put me in much traffic. Yeah. Uh, but for those who, like, deal with I-4 on a daily basis, you might want to go and just check out to see what's coming. It's i4ultimate.com. And this kind of gives you a rundown. It's a very busy page, to be honest. Yeah. Because it gives... Oh, gi- look at that. It's giving you a rundown of the plans uh, for I-4, what they want to bring to I-4 to make it better. Um, you know, last night we went to this event that kind of unveiled some areas here in this area, including um, new traffic pan- p- uh, pattern uh, at Sand Lake in I-4, and then also the new Daryl Carter um, Daryl Carter um, exit and entry ramp to <laughs> I-4, which is going to be cool. I did a little virtual option. reality thing they yes. had set up. Where, I got some pictures. Um, oh, you did? <laughs> <laughs> I was ho- like, they gave, I don't know why they didn't let me put the goggles on, but they had a goggle. Yeah, I saw the goggles there. They didn't let and you. And they had an iPad, and you like hold it up, and it kind of steers you as if you were driving through these new roads um what it'll be like to enter and exit the highways and the byways and it seems like a lot of a lot of intersecting lanes crisscrossing like look very confusing like a lot of stuff going on so but anything to keep traffic moving i'm all about well that's sand lake though that's sand lake and i4 area there i mean i'm most concerned with that because I mean, that between there and here, that's where I do I'll live a lot of my life. And, you know, as they keep building these apartments, you know, Turkey Lake used to be like God's gift. You know, mm-hmm. you could stay off of I-4 and take Turkey Lake basically all the way to Universal. But now they're building stuff. They're going to be building um, that draft house thing that we were talking about mm-hmm. episodes ago. They're going to be building other things there and it's really it's going to congest that area a lot yeah so this is uh just interesting they talked 
they didn't have on display there last night, but uh, I asked last night was about the Crossroads because I don't know if we've talked about that here, but Crossroads is going away. That shopping They're center. They're going to doze the whole thing. They're bulldozing the whole thing. And I guess he was saying, the guy that I talked to was talking about that it's really a part of a 535 expansion. So yeah. I guess they're going to be blowing out 535 and maybe, I don't know, adding What I was lanes. under the impression was that once you get off I-4, it's going to like funnel you directly into Disney and then they trap you there and they take all your money. <laughs> well, basically, yeah. I think it's going to not allow you to go anywhere else but Disney Springs. <laughs> <laughs> Disney Disney basically has It's like right off I-4 Into the Disney trap You know what would be nice What? Is to have uh, a road over Even closer on the side to go Directly across right into Disney Sp- Disney Springs Road Like an over ramp over I-4 Anyway <laughs> I just want all the things because there's too many people here. Anything to make my life easier, I am here for it. Anyway, but it was an interesting to go and see and and, and talk to these uh, Florida Department of Transportation people. There was there was a lot of actually staff there last night. There was like, ready to answer questions, <laughs> but they weren't ready to answer questions outside of. <laughs> limited question like, the one guy even vague. said to us he said something about like legally i can't disclose dates or something um when we were asking him about this 535 project yeah but um they had like these little bo- like blueprints you know when you print out like big blueprints on paper and they had them on tables and they had like these little toy cars where you could like drive the little roads that was stephanie's favorite part <laughs> Anyway, go check out i4ultimate.com. Uh, if, especially if you're using i4 every day, uh, s- you can dream about the improvements because Ooh. some of these improvements are far away. Far away. Far. Because one guy, what one guy said, he said like 22. F- funding is an issue. Yeah. Is what <laughs> we know what that means. Well, thank you guys so much again for joining us. Make sure that you head over to orlandooutofcontext.com. Visit us there. Make sure that you are s- subscribed and follow. Well, following us over on Instagram at Orlando Out of Context. Then listen and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. All the things. All the things. And until next time, bye. bye. Cheese. Cheese. Cheese.